In this video, we'll dive right in and create our first Bifrost fluids. All right, so first things first, let's make sure that we actually have the Bifrost plugin enabled. So if we'll find it under the effects menu set over here on the top left-hand corner of Maya. You should see a Bifrost menu. Now, if you don't see this menu, that just means Bifrost is not enabled. So we can come under Windows, Settings, Preferences, in the Plugin Manager, and if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you should see the Bifrost plugins. So just load these. Um, I have them auto-loaded, so that way they'll automatically load whenever I launch Maya. Uh, with that, Bifrost is loaded, and we should be good to go. Now, before we can actually create our first fluids, we need to create a polygon mesh for Bifrost to emit the particles from. So I'm going to come under Create, Polygon Primitives, and let's just create something like a cube. I'll scale it up just a little bit, just so it's a little bit easier to see. And maybe move it up a little bit. There we go. Just so we have, uh, we can see a little bit easier. Now, with this cube selected, if we come under Effects, Bifrost, Create, and Liquid. So, before I do this, actually, let's hop into the Outliner so we can see what's going to happen. So, we have our cube selected. If we come under Bifrost, Create Liquid, you'll see in the Outliner, there are a few new nodes that automatically get created. So let's look at these nodes just to get uh, kind of familiar with them because we'll be spending quite a bit of time in these nodes. They're very essential to how Bifrost works. So the first node is our Bifrost liquid container. So if we open up our liquid here, we'll see we have our container and our liquid. Now, if we had things like foam and stuff like that, that would be under here as well as another node. Um, but we'll look at generating that kind of stuff later on in this course. Um, by default, we'll have our liquid container. And this is going to, um, the attributes in this node are things for the overall simulation. So if I hop into the attribute editor here, uh, you'll see things like the overall resolution of the simulation, um, things like whether or not we're caching it. Um, actually saving it to the hard drive, things like our time steps. Um, now, if you're not familiar with what these things are, we'll actually look at a lot of this throughout this course. I just wanted to show you that this is where a lot of these settings are. Um, if you're familiar with another tool, maybe something like RealFlow or Houdini, a lot of these things are pretty typical for a flip solver like Bifrost. All right, so we have our liquid container. We also have our liquid node. So the liquid node is specific to um, this particular liquid or this particular um, set of particles that we are generating. So with the liquid node, we have things that are specific to that. So uh, for example, as you can see right here, something like um, whether or not we have uh, meshing enabled. Now you'll notice over here, we do have a Bifrost liquid mesh node that gets created. But because we don't have meshing enabled, right now and by default when you first create fluids, it's just an empty node. So we'll look at creating a mesh and things like that later on. And if any of this doesn't make sense, that's perfectly fine. We'll really start to cover a lot of this throughout this course. I just wanted to show you the three nodes that are very, very key to Bifrost because we'll be working in those quite a bit. So I'd encourage you to create your first Bifrost fluids and start playing around in these nodes. Get familiar with some of the attributes that are in these because, as I said, we will be spending a majority of this course um, in one of these nodes. Now, before we move on to our next lesson, um, there is one thing I wanted to point out. If we come under Bifrost and open up the Bifrost options, closed, go to Bifrost Options. Now, by default, Bifrost is set to use 12 gigs of RAM. So depending on what your system actually has, um, you may need to adjust this in order to keep Bifrost from well, freezing your system or crashing or um, whatever it may do. Now, in my particular case, um, my system has 32 gigs of RAM. So I'm going to set this to 16, just bump it up just a little bit. And that's just going to help the simulations run a little bit quicker. 
And I'm just going to hit apply and close. All right, so now that we've created our first bifrost fluids, we need to learn how to actually simulate this so we can see them in action.